Hi, I'm Val Hart in San Antonio, Texas, founder of Val Hart and Friends at ValHart.com. Welcome to The Real Dr. Doolittle Show, the show for animals and the people who love them. I've been called a real-life Dr. Doolittle many times in my career as an expert animal communicator, behaviorist, pet psychic, and master healer. My mission and passion is to improve the lives of animals the world over by helping humans learn how to speak their language, how to understand their viewpoints, and heal. After all, our love of animals helps us be better humans, and the more balanced and healthy we are, the more balanced and healthy they can be, too. Be sure and look for my CDs on iTunes, and to find out more about my work and to receive your free Quick Start Animal Talk course, just go to my website at valhart.com. While you're there for a limited time, you can also apply for a complimentary Happy Animal Assessment Session. And if you want to learn how to be your own Dr. Doolittle, check out the world's first complete animal communication made easy system available now on my website at valhart.com. Thank you and enjoy the show. Hi, this is Val Hart, the real Dr. Doolittle, and today I'm talking with the Gibbon Conservation Center. It's a nonprofit facility that was founded in 1977 by Alan Richard Mutnick for the study and preservation of gibbons. The GCC is a nonprofit organization. It's the only facility in the world devoted exclusively to the study, preservation, and propagation of gibbons by establishing secure captive gene pools in case attempts to preserve species or subspecies in the wild fail. To date, seven of 17 gibbon species that have been housed at uh, the Gibbon Conservation Center have produced offspring. Successful breeding programs are crucial because if rainforests throughout Asia disappear, captive, captive populations will be the only remnants of the gibbon species. Um, the center houses nearly 40 gibbons, which is the second largest group of gibbons outside their countries of origin. And, of course, the comfort and well-being of these primates is my guest's primary concern. Welcome to the show, Gabby and Netta. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Oh, I'm so delighted to talk to you. I know I had originally contracted or contacted you guys well over a year ago, and I wanted to interview Alan, um, your founder. Um, and, of course, um, he's not with us anymore. Do you want to talk about that for just a minute so we can... Um, honor him, and then we can carry forward into the work that he created? Yes, we actually just celebrated um, Alan's memory on November 4th. He passed ah. away in 2011, on November 4th. Okay. And he was 60 years old. Ah. I'm so sorry to hear about his passing. I know many of us mourn him, and, and I know he made a big difference in a lot of lives. So. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, and I know he inspired uh, you, Gabby, right? He inspired you very deeply. You you wanted to follow in his footsteps and dedicated, have dedicated your life to studying, protecting gibbons? Yes, and he also inspired so many people. And he was famous in a gibbon field. And um, he was only nine years old when he decided to dedicate his life to gibbons. And he wow. worked uh, for many years for the gibbons. Wow. He was exactly. nine he was nine years old? Yeah, yes. How in the world did Alan fall in love with and know that he that was gonna be his life work? Do you know the story? Yes. He was growing up on the Taza movies and there is a soundtrack in the Taza movie that actually are given and he also heard the given singing in a zoo and he fell in love with their voice. And wow. His parents if he can work with Gibbons and has a zoo for Gibbons. And they told him he can do anything he wants. Uh, he just has to work very hard. Wow. <laughs> oh, uh, it's so, uh, uh, oh, this is uh, so amazing. It's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. <sighs> All right. So, so let's talk about what gibbons actually are. What is a gibbon? Gibbons are a small arboreal ape, and they live in the, uh, Southeast Asia in the tropical rainforest. Okay. So they're a small ape, and I know we've got some wonderful pictures that you sent over. They're so darling. Oh, my God. Yes. How, how big are they actually? Because it's kind of hard to tell from pictures. Are they, like, um, the size of a small child? Are they smaller, little bitty ones? What yeah, I mean, like a small child, like a – but they're, they're um, two years old. Yeah, but they're, they're thin and long. 
Okay, so Gabby, that's your story. That's how you got here. Yes. Right? That's quite a story. <laughs> wow. Okay, so Netta, what, how did you get here? Um, mine's, I guess, a little less uh, exciting. I I just came here. My I was in California, and my aunt lived here, and she brought me to the Gibbon Center because she knew I was interested in working with the eight. Okay. Um, and I kind of well, now you're you're originally from Israel, though. Yeah, but I, I was going to I was going to school in in Massachusetts, so after college, I I came to visit her. Okay. She brought me here, and I kind of just asked Alan for a job. All <laughs> right. It's he, like, thought was, so um, he thought I was he thought I was joking because he thought I was sixteen years old. <laughs> but then uh, a few weeks later, I got a call from him asking if I if I was actually interested. That's great. Wow. And you never look back. No, I I I love it. It's quite incredible. Wow. T- tell me something that you think is quite incredible. Uh, what is it? Ex- explain that. Well, they're, they're really interesting in terms of their social structure. I, I studied um, kind of the, the evolution of social cognition in college. And, okay. Um, given they live in, in pairs, in family units, so in the wild, each family, which is a mother and father and offspring till around eight, like seven or eight, so um, protect their territory, um, and so it's, it's kind of very similar to us. They they only were embedded in this larger, more complex social structure, but their family unit, mm. the way they interact with each other, they they have, for example, they mate like mate for pleasure and not just for wow. For, so not not like to that, procreate. Okay, not just to procreate. Okay, cool. Yeah, That's and they're, they're, I mean, they're, they need something to keep them together. <laughs> <laughs> you mean it's not just us that like it kind of stuff? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good to know. All right. Thank you. And you can tell the difference here between a pair that, that really likes each other and, and a pair that's kind of more, um, you know, like a, a, a an arranged marriage or, or something where you're like, oh, yes, well, I guess. Just the two of us. So, so they, wow. <laughs> so they have arranged marriages in the Gibson um, Society world? By us. Oh, by you. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say. By any Jews any or anything, if you put a pair together, mm-hmm. you know, it's not, it won't always work. They won't always click. You kind of need the chemistry right. still. Right. Some of them do. They grow to love each other. And others have just instantly are, are just very... Very interested in one another. We actually have a pair that have been together for a very long time, mm. the Ricky and, and Vok. And Vok has kind of this frowny face. And Gavi has this picture of him where he's he's sitting next to Ricky, and they're both looking straight at the camera, and he's got his little frowny face. And then <laughs> the next shot over, he he turns around and he's looking at her, and he's smiling. <laughs> oh, how cute! <laughs> yeah, they're they're a very good couple. I have a, I have a question. So, of the gibbons that you have that have been procreating, that that, that you said you have seventeen offspring so far, um, are those from couples that are really happy together, or are those from the ones that you just kind of put together? Can well, you tell? Well, this is um, one of our goals to breed gibbons in captivity and save yeah. the species, and we work with other zoos to. Uh, Raise their number in captivity, and uh, yes, they are arranged. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, it sometimes they also like they have a choice. Like if they don't get along, then we have to switch. And okay. Okay. It's a slow introduction sometimes. So they see each other. They might be housed close to each other. They start singing with each other. Mm-hmm. They sing a duet and. Wow. If they get along, they coordinate that duet to see that uh, they might get along. And if we house them close to each other, they start grooming. And other times, it's just a very quick thing. Like we house them close to each other, and they start hugging each other and grooming. Mm-hmm. And uh, they they do fall in love with each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's oh, not, yeah. It's not. It's it's um. We do have some that that aren't as fond of each other, and we, we have others that uh, most of them just. End up really liking each other. Cool. So, do they mate for life? Well, they're 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 known as 
being serially monogamous, so, so kind of like us. Um, Interesting. Okay. They'll they'll find if one dies or, or something happens, they will get a new mate, and okay. they'll, they'll occasionally stay with a the neighbor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the male man. Uh-oh. We have two pair of siamangs, and one of the males started singing with the other female. So it was like flirting with, with another one. Oh, my God, they flirted. That was very interesting. Oh, my God, they're flirting and committing adultery. Oh, my God. <laughs> so do you have, <laughs> so do you, do you have any female gibbons chasing the males around, give, you know, whacking them on the head with a coconut or something? It's <laughs> <laughs> very interesting given social system that usually the other female is dominant, and she's the one who tells the male where to go and what to eat, and she's the one who picks her favorite food first. Mm-hmm. And also we have a female who, whenever she sings with a male, she kind of kicks them, and that's how she tells them when they supposed to start the song together. Ah, okay. So, so she's the conductor. She's in charge. Sometimes. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> okay, I love this. This is fun. Okay, uh, all right. So, um, um, can you tell us a story about maybe a, a special pair that you've had or have? Um, well, we let's see. We have we have Ricky and Box. Right. Are probably some of the more uh, in love gibbons. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and we recently um, put well, we have a, a adolescent female who's now with a male, and it was an interesting. She she's going through puberty basically right now. Uh-huh. Really interesting to to see the change in her at where she's like becoming a uh, adult female and so he was, at first he was really kind of shy and uh he was dominant and slowly she's uh she's really kind of holding her own she's becoming more interested in him and she she's uh she also they also really like each other spend a lot of time grooming which is kind of um you know very important for getting so the touch and, and grooming each other mm-hmm. okay so they've been, that was an interesting thing to see. That is so, you know, I'm just thinking of, of human teenagers and how grooming is also so important. <laughs> <laughs> Whether they're sporting mohawk or, you know, neon colored hair or, you know, they're doing tats or they've got, you know, uh, stuff, you know, and then they, they have to, you know, wear the right clothes and, and whatnot. I mean, I'm just there really are some pretty remarkable correlations between the two societies, you know. And we're <laughs> we're mammals too, right? We're just kind of two-legged, naked apes. <laughs> yes. uh, so um, I think that's really fascinating. It's great. Hmm. Also, their parental care is very unique because it's not just the female who cares for the offspring. The male is very active and sometimes even carry the offspring and yeah. with them and grooming them. Yeah, so they, it's a very strong bond within the family. They play a lot, and a, a lot of times, so the young girl sleeps at first with the mom until either she, she gets a new baby or decides mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. doesn't want to sleep with them anymore. And then they'll often go to the dad or um, an older sibling and sleep together, depending on how big the family is. Uh huh. Well, that makes a lot of sense. You know, it's the mothers tend to be the most important beings in a baby's life uh, just because they're the, the source of nurturing <laughs> of yeah, yeah. milk, right? Um, but then as they get older, we need our dad. We need we start bonding and connecting with the number two most important person in yeah, the world. Yeah. And they, they're, uh, some of our dads here, are just, they, they, they play so much with their kids. And you hear the kids, they giggle. They actually giggle. Oh, they do. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So they're ticklish? <laughs> they are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. Oh, my goodness. Okay, all right. So um, so tell us what a day is like at the center. Well, it starts pretty early. It starts um, around, well, they start singing uh, around 6.30 or even earlier in the summer, around so 5.30. It, it, so is we, the singing we, is the singing connected to the sunrise itself or to yeah, the yeah, yeah yeah okay so when the sun peaks above the horizon is when they go vocal yeah they, and they it's always start. Sasha 
one of our male Northern White Tea given who started that the song. Right? And if yeah. you see it, everybody speaks it. <laughs> <laughs> No uh, night owls. They're all uh, early birds. Okay. Yeah, they yeah. all they all kind of get ready for for sleeping by depends you know it depends on the summer or winter. But around now it's probably around four. They'll still all kind of settle down. Wow. So, so they don't have TV, I guess, huh? <laughs> 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 if you think about it, in the wild where yeah. they're constantly moving um, yeah. throughout the day, they they need before the sun sets. They really need to find a, a place where they'll feel comfortable and safe for right. the night. So that's why they they settle down pretty fairly that early. Makes, yeah. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Okay. So uh, so we wake in the morning with sunrise song, the duets and calling and vocalizing. Yes, and then we give them their first feed, which is apples and the monkey chow. The monkey chow is a food that made for primates. It's a dry food and has a fiber, extra fiber and protein. It's, and it's kind of like dog food. It's like a cereal. For Gibbon. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Ceri- uh, so given cereal. Yes. yes. <laughs> right, okay, That's okay, cool. So we go around with two buckets and we feed all the 41 gibbons. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then we come back in the kitchen and we prepare their vitamins that uh, kind of su- supplement what they get, um, just to make sure that they're getting all their essential nutrients. Mm-hmm. Good. Great. Okay. Okay. And we hand that out. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, we have a lettuce seed and a veggie seed. Um, and then we do nuts. And then we do another apple seed and bananas, another veggie seed, <laughs> the lettuce uh, fruit, like yeah, um, either papaya or persimmon or mm-hmm. CGB, if we feel so much excited giving them. <laughs> okay. Um, and then we have a, a final lettuce seed. Wow, okay. And then we do cleaning. Yeah, okay. And clean the <laughs> enclosures and change their water and clean their um, their seed, seed boxes. Yeah. Okay. okay. And okay. this will other extra work like fix something in the enclosure, uh, do some enrichment, and uh, keep the place clean, rake up the leaves, and it's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is a lot of work, isn't it? Yeah, it, it truly time. is. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it's 104, we're out there, and if it's really cold and super rainy, we're still out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, life goes on. Um, yes. So, um, do y'all uh, do things like, are you studying them, doing research projects, or teaching, or training, or um, playing we games do. with them? What, what, uh, in fact, what kind of games do they do they play? Uh, well, they have not too many toys. They like to play with each other, and then they have ropes and bungee cords, uh, branches and balls, balls that they, they play with, and okay. um, we study their behavior and uh, doing observations. We have uh, scientists coming from, from all over the world just to do non-invasive studies, just uh, we collecting fecal samples and doing a routine exam, we collect blood samples, and we send them to scientists to study their genetics, their hormonal okay. changes. Hmm. Okay. And we have... Uh, a lot of schools who come, we give educational tours to um, the public, and we have a lot of anthropology classes, a lot of schools from the area that aren't too far away that, that come, and either they get extra credit or they ask us specifically to do um, okay. an educational tour. Okay. Uh, in fact, that was my next question. How can people come visit uh, or get involved? We open on the yeah. weekend. Uh, so every Saturday and Sunday we are open from 9:30 to 12 p.m. 12 okay. p.m. 12 p.m. <laughs> okay. And then we're they can also contact us either by phone or or um, and all our information is on Facebook or okay. if you Google Given Center. Right. That so that, yeah. Right. So they can Google the Given Conservation Center or you're on Facebook.com at the group. At the Gibbon Conservation Center. Yes. Um, okay. Good. So and our so, new website is going to be up uh, in the next few months. But until we have a front page with the most uh, necessary information, how to get here, how to donate, how to help, 
So okay. you can also go to the front page of the, our website. Okay. So how if how do people get to hear the given songs? Usually when uh, we are open, at least once they will sing. Uh, around oh, really? 9, 9.30. Uh, yeah. Even though they start really early in the morning, they'll sing several times yeah. throughout the day. Oh, and oh, Or in okay. the mornings. And, um, like, I wouldn't show up at 2 and expect to hear them singing. But yeah. we do on occasion. But if you show up at around um, 9, they'll, they'll usually sing. Probably around 10, they sing. And wow. If y'all could just teach them to sing on cue, you could take them on a tour and... <laughs> <laughs> go to an American Idol or something. We used to do like a playback course and yeah, yeah. the unsled, uh and they started singing. And now we have two given that uh, if we bring a big group there, then they start singing. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Sometimes it's only one, one of the species. Each, yeah, each species, we have five here at the moment. They mm -hmm. each have a very distinct song. So wow. they sound very different, kind of a, a big big. Or as so it mm -hmm. depends who you hear when you come here. Wow. So each couple has their own distinct song. So, oh, wow, that's so Every cool. Every piece has their own song, and the male and the female has a different song. And they okay. sing the duet together. So every family has just sounds different. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they sing a solo song. And uh -huh. even in the dark, sometimes early morning, like, 4 a.m., sometimes the dad and male sing together. Wow. That's fascinating. That's really fascinating. <laughs> so um, did you tell me that you have some given songs that we can hear? Yes. Oh, cool. How can we hear them? I'm going to play it now. <laughs> okay. It's going to start. <laughs> okay. really great. I, I know the recording, you know, through the, the system that we're using today is probably not getting, not doing yeah. serve, you know, really just um, do for this. We can't, I can't hear all of it, uh, and I know I'm missing bits, so <laughs> but it I would be great. But I some soundtrack. <laughs> yeah? Okay. Yes. Cool, cool. I love it. Love it. All right. <laughs> oh, this is so much fun. Um, is there anything else you want us to know about the Given Center, or... Uh, what would you like people to to do? Uh, you well, we, we we work completely, pretty much completely on donations. So um, any any help we can get is always welcome. We also okay. accept volunteers. So the people who are in the area and want to gain kind of experience working with with them, um, yeah, there's always things we. We can have them do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Oh wow. I love that. Uh, so, so you're working on donations. So, um, and you also need volunteers, I'm sure, because it it really is a lot of work yeah. um, to take care of these guys and to treasure and honor them. And, <laughs> you know, uh, and play with them as, as the case may be, or just um, you know uh, support them. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you so much for the hard work that you're doing and how wonderful it is. Um, so, oh, great. 
thank you. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Well, um, let me know when you've got stuff coming up, and uh, we'll try to get the word out. And and everybody go to uh, join up with the Gibbon Conservation Center at Facebook.com. Um, just Google them and you will find them and connect. Yes. And again, yeah, and again, you guys are out of Santa Clarita, California. Uh, so if you're, if you can make a trip over there um, and give them a hand, that would be fantastic. So, thanks, Gabby. Thanks, Netta. I really appreciate your time today. Thank, Thank you, you for your time. Thank you for calling. Yeah, you're welcome. I, okay, we'll talk to y'all later. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to the show. For more information or to listen to other podcasts, go to valhart.com forward slash blog. And if you're someone who values a non-invasive, holistic solution to resolving problems with your dogs, cats, and horses, and you want better behaved, healthier, and happier animals, just go to my website at valhart.com to apply for a complimentary happy animal assessment session. And be sure and remember to look for my CDs on iTunes. Learning how to talk with animals is fun and will change your life. So while you're there at my site, get my free Quick Start Animal Talk course and check out the world's first complete animal communication made easy system. May the love of animals bless you, teach you, inspire you, heal you, and reconnect you to the circle of life. <laughs>